Okay stove fans, I thought I'd show you the rocket stove I've just built. It's uh, built from an old gas bottle. So what I did, uh, I cut the gas bottle about there. Well obviously there. And then I cut the top off it and I welded that thick steel plate on the top. Uh, what I did to reattach the lid was I put a little rope gasket in there and then I just wiped it with some high temperature sealant so if I do need to get in I can just whip the top off and that's not a problem. Um, the, the box at the back is has got a little plate on it there which I can just take off to clean out that flue pipe or the inside of the actual stove itself. Uh, the flue runs from that pipe and it runs along the wall to there, comes back up, goes into there, round that bend and then along and then up and out the wall just there and you can just see the outlet there running out the wall. Um, the, the reason for these weird contraption bendy things is I got this pipe off a mate of mine, he gave it me, so it's, it's actually a six and a half inch pipe uh, and I couldn't get bends for it, so I figured if I'm going to buy six inch bends then I'm going to have to make some kind of weird adapter to fit the bends on the pipe, so it's probably going to be easier to build these boxes to take the pipe, so what I did, I got two steel plates and I just kind of welded uh, another plate round, a, a semicircular round on and then I just welded a flat plate on the front there and cut two holes in it and then just shoved, shoved the pipes into it and just wiped them with sealant, high temperature sealant and they're fine, they've done a good job so that's what I did so I've got me got me pipes there uh, plus a good thing about these uh, bends was because I use this this plate I was able to fix the plates on the wall with screws uh, so it's kept it's got everything really you know really solid and it's got it's got everything held in place really well a conventional rocket stove I know it has the it has these pipes kind of underground or you know below ground and they build settees and beds on them and stuff but you know I've got a concrete floor I didn't want to start ripping the floor up so I figured hey why not run it along that wall uh, same same thing really isn't it so what I plan to do is that bottom pipe um, as you can see there's there's about six seven inches underneath it so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna build brickwork around that bottom one so I'm gonna fill it all in with brickwork and mortar uh, so that'll give me my, like, my thermal mass so that that pipe will heat that mass up uh, then when the fire's not actually burning that mass will carry on giving off heat into the workshop I mean that that pipe does get uh, quite it gets warm enough that you can't keep your hand on it that one as it comes up round the bend and back into this one that one gets warm it comes it comes uh, through this round this into this one and that one is you know it's just mildly warm by the time it gets to there there's hardly any heat at all coming off that pipe and then by the time we get to this one and it comes up here I mean that that's virtually cold this pipe and when when the actual flue gases are coming out of there all you're getting is condensation and very very gentle heat, I mean you wouldn't even know there was a fire lit to be honest with you this thing gets ridiculously hot on a tiny amount of wood the, uh, I did have one of them stove thermometers and I put it on top when I first lit it and it, I was, I was putting some wood in the fire and I was uh, just checking it and the last time I looked at it, it was 750 centigrade on the top shortly after that the spring went twang on it and so I don't really know what temperature it got up to so you know the damn thing gets really hot incredibly hot on a very small amount of fuel okay the uh, the firebox on this isn't 
strictly conventional I know um, it's about five liters in size internally and what I did I put this uh, I put this door on it so really so I can contain the fire um, because it's in a workshop there's a lot of wood and combustible stuff about so I didn't really like the idea of having an open fire in the workshop um, unattended so I decided I've seen I saw a guy on YouTube who's done one of these and um, what was his name did 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 can't think but he's he's put a glass door on one and I, I really like that idea so uh, I kind of copied that but my doors on the top um, the other thing is to get the air in when the door is shut what I did I made these side plates uh, like little letter boxes as you can see and there's one on each side there you go so also what I did inside the firebox as you can see I welded these I welded a plate on that side right to the bottom of the firebox and I did the same on that side and I, but I left a gap at the top it's about an inch three quarter inch gap at the top there and there now what what happens is um, the inside of this firebox here it gets really incredibly blistering hot so what happens is the air comes in through the little letter hole there and as it passes up inside it gets preheated off that internal plate and the outer plate and then the air enters here uh, comes in and obviously rushes straight down into the stove so what it does it kind of washes past the glass on its way in from each side and I'm really surprised how incredibly clean the, the glass stays I mean it does get a bit sooty when when I'm burning it low but uh, other than that it's, it's fine it's fantastic it works really well so I'm dead chuffed with that and the other thing with having these little vents is on the side I can control the burn of the stove so as I say that box is about five liters in volume um, and if I fill that with wood with a control burn I can get four hours burning out that out of that much timber which has really surprised me and the workshop is very warm I mean even burning it slow you cannot touch that that bottle you, it would take the skin off your hand so uh, the amount of heat you're getting from your timber is absolutely incredible so for anyone thinking of building one of these I would say you know yeah hell yeah build one got you nothing to lose and you'll burn hardly any timber the last stove I had um, again was a gas bottle like that but I had um, a door just a door cut in the side welded a couple of hinges on uh, and the flue just went out through the ceiling there you can just see there where I've patched that hole up with a bit of cardboard and tape for now um, and that thing I mean to keep the workshop warm it would burn literally a barrel full of wood wheelbarrow full of wood a day and more um, it's one degree outside at the moment and this place I mean it's too it's too hot to it's too hot to work in it really is so and it's burnt what a bucket full of wood a small bucket black bucket it's burnt that much timber today and this place is red hot believe me so in terms of economy definitely definitely build one okay so that's my rocket stove I think I've gone over everything I think it's only fair that I should light a fire and show you how it burns I mean from the flip what the other thing that just before I light the fire the other thing that surprised me is what comes out the chimney and inside here this as I say the fire itself is blistering hot and there's the flue and all that comes out of the flue is a little bit of condensate well a lot of condensation not a little bit of condensation and it's so it's you know it's not even warm the gas is coming out aren't even warm you can put your hand over there and you can just feel it's really mild the heat that's coming out 
but just bladdering with condensation because it's so cold as I say outside it's kind of one degree and virtually freezing um, and you're just getting loads of condensation I don't know where it all comes from but there you go so that's it I think uh, all we've got to do now is light the stove so I'll try and position my phone somewhere where can I do it I'll position the stove there or there so you can watch you can watch what happens Lighter. Right, well, what you've got to do is to get these rocket stoves going to get the rocketing effect, as you all probably know, is first you light your fire, stick it in the flue to get the draw going, and there it is. It's away. I'll pick the camera up in a second and uh, I'll, I'll show you. Right, so there's, there's some paper to get us started right it's away and what I'm going to do now is put a few sticks on here if I can get them on before the actual wood burns that is I'll just get a few more sticks from over here a bit drier these that wasn't quite mission successful was it okay I'll come back to this in a sec <laughs> 